Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about Instagram. Obviously, if you clicked on this video, you know that. I just get asked a lot how I've grown my Instagram. I have grown my Instagram organically, and within the past four months, I have gained myself about 30,000 followers. Right before October hit, I had exactly 79,000 followers, and right now I'm at 110,000 on Instagram. So I've been getting asked a lot like, how am I doing it? What am I doing? What's going on? How are you doing this, girl? I've also seen, you know, a lot of other fellow influencers, fellow creators, people just in general seeing how crappy Instagram has gotten with like their algorithm and just how crappy they've gotten since they switched a lot of the things that they had going on. So I kind of wanted to just talk about it and since I get asked about it so much I figured why not just make a little video about it to help whoever I can help out. I'm no pro to be quite honest. I don't really know what I'm doing that's making everything goes so smoothly. I'm just kind of doing my thing, but I wrote down key points that I um, keep in mind or things that I have been doing that might help you guys out. If one of these tips helps you guys out, hey, I'm happy with it. I will be happy and this video will have been worth it. So, so to jump right into it, I'm going to talk about three words that are commonly talked about with Instagram or about Instagram or on Instagram. Those three words are algorithm, engagement and shadow banning. Um, I know I've talked about shadow banning on Instagram before and I got tons of messages like what is shadow ban? So I just kind of want to go through these three words and really explain what they mean and what's going on because these are three very important words that really that Instagram really looks upon or that is really something that Instagram does. So the first word, algorithm. So this is what I've gathered about what algorithm means over the past few months. What I have found that it means that I did write a little thing about it. A good way to keep in touch with your algorithm or your engagement is to be a business account. Um, now I know not all of us are you know, business people or whatever, but to have a business account, it really helps you kind of keep track and see how well your posts are doing, when your posts are more popular, um, what days of the week, like the things you're posting on a Monday, it, like it'll be really popular and then on Tuesday it won't be very popular. So you can kind of keep track like, oh, what did I post on Monday that made people look at my profile? Also, when you're on your profile at the very top of the screen, it'll tell you how many views um, your page has gotten within the past seven days. So that's really helpful just to kind of know, you know, what's kind of going on with your Instagram and how many people are looking at your Instagram. It's pretty important. With that being said, this goes into play with algorithms. So basically, when you post a picture on Instagram, it's only going to be sent out to a small percentage of your following. So your whole following is not going to see that post. And it's basically going to measure how quickly you're getting engagement on this photo compared to a photo you may have posted yesterday or last week at the same time, generally the same time, the same day. It's measuring how many people are engaging with your photo, how many people are liking your photo, how many people are commenting on your photo, saving your photo, and it's comparing it to last week. So the more engagement you're getting on the photo, your photo will be bumped up for more people to see. Um, if it's less engagement, your photo will be bumped down and people will not see it is basically what's going on. I hope that makes sense. Instagram used to post everything in chronological order. So, you know, you would go through your timeline on Instagram, you're scrolling through your feed and you see everybody's posts by what time they posted. So you see someone who posted something at 10 o'clock, someone who posted something at 10.10, someone who posted something at 10.30, someone who posted something at 11. Now you'll see something that somebody posted yesterday, something that somebody posted five days ago, somebody something, something that somebody posted 10 minutes ago, something that somebody posted last week. It kind of is random and that's going based off how popular the posts are and what you're liking and what you're commenting on. So Instagram's basically showing you what you wanna see. Let's go into engagement real quick. Engagement is exactly what it sounds like. It's how much are you engaging with other people and how much are other people engaging with your posts. 
So if you really like an artist's stuff or anyone's stuff, make sure you're liking and commenting on those posts because if you're not doing that, you're probably not going to see those posts. Let's say you love Britney Spears. You just love her so much, but you're like, I haven't seen any of her posts lately. I haven't seen anything. And you go and look at her profile and you see like 10 posts and you're like, what the heck? I haven't even seen any of these. It's probably because you're not liking or commenting on her stuff. If you want to see her stuff, you want to go and like her stuff, comment on a few of her pictures. That way Instagram knows like, hey, you actually do enjoy seeing Britney Spears' posts. Let's go ahead and keep adding those into your feed. So it sounds really weird and it's kind of odd that Instagram is doing things this way, but that's how they're doing that. So you as an Instagrammer, it's important if you want engagement to go up, which is really important to gain new followers. It's important for you to go and comment on other people's stuff, to like people's stuff. Don't be, don't be a robot and say the same things on every comment that you post. Try to be a little bit different. Something else that Instagram looks out for is spammers and if you're commenting the same things over and over and over again, they're going to think that you're a spam bot and they're going to shadow ban you or get rid of your account. The next word, shadow ban. So it sounds kind of like a spooky word and it is pretty spooky. Shadow banning is when you use the same hashtags in every single post over and over and over again. And it's when you use all 30 hashtags. Instagram will see you as a spam account and they will allow the people who already follow you to see your posts under those hashtags. The people who are not following you can go to those hashtags and they will not see your posts there. So that means you're shadow banned and you can't gain any new followers, at least from your hashtags because nobody's going to see them. So you want to be careful with what hashtags you're putting on every post. You want to make sure you're not doing the same exact ones on every post. And you know what? I only do maybe at the most 10 hashtags on my pictures and they keep it pretty basic like I'll tag like hashtag the company's makeup that I'm using I'll hashtag makeup I'll hashtag whatever pretty basic stuff I won't hashtag a million things and I won't hashtag anything that's not pertaining to my post so be careful with that because they will shadow ban you and I have been shadow banned before so that's why I've took it down a notch with the hashtagging and I've kind of stopped that. That's something that I have changed within the past few months so I feel like that's a huge part of why my engagement has changed as well. So here's some more tips and I'm just going to kind of quickly go through these because I have kind of a few of them and remember this is mostly pertaining to makeup artists I'm so sorry if you're a different type of account but these things can still pertain to you certain things can you know like the algorithm engagement and shadow banning all pertain to everybody and there will be things in here that I'm about to say that will pertain to every account <sighs> I'm just gonna quickly go through these things so first thing first if you are a makeup Instagram or any kind of account creating content or looks or whatever you're doing, it's very important to constantly create new stuff. You don't want to just keep posting throwbacks and posting old stuff and posting the same thing over and over again. You really want to create new and fresh ideas and fresh looks. So it's super important to do that. Something I think you should not do too much of at least is face tuning and editing your photos. I edit my photos like I edit the contrast and the shadow a little bit and that's about all I edit maybe the sharpness a little bit too but I don't go in with Facetune I don't own Facetune I don't have Photoshop I don't do any of that I just use the editing program that Instagram already has built into it. Um, Facetune is okay from time to time but I feel like there's a lot of artists out there who really really Facetune their stuff and you can really tell that it's edit edited. Something that I pride myself in is that I am a normal person and I like to share that with you guys and let you know that I'm a normal person and I'm a real person and I have pores and my lines are always perfect on my makeup. <sighs> Sometimes my foundation looks cakey because I didn't moisturize well enough the night before. I am normal just like all of you and I don't want to edit my stuff and make it look like I the, th the stuff that I do is unachievable, basically. So that's how I feel about Facetune. I feel like some people Facetune their stuff way too much, and it's just not necessary. So if you can, stay away from the crazy Facetuning. Like, don't go too ham with it, okay? Keep it at a minimum. Good quality photos is super important, and I know this is hard because not everybody is able to 
obtain these things, but making sure you have a really nice camera on your phone or a nice camera in general to take good pictures with. If the lighting is low, if it looks not very clear, if the photo isn't very nice looking, it's not going to capture somebody's attention. And I know that's kind of harsh to say because again, not everybody has the brand new iPhone or a Galaxy phone to take great pictures with, but it's something you really want to try to strive for and at least maybe, I don't even know, borrow someone's phone? Borrow someone's camera to take pictures with? That's something you can always do too. That's what I used to do when I was younger. Before Facebook and before Instagram, when I was a MySpace girl, y'all, I used my mama's phone and I used my aunt's camera to take pictures because my phone was shh crap. That's something you can do as well. And I know, I know it's hard, but you have to create uh, pictures and post stuff that's captivating and eye-catching and that people are going to stop and look at and be like, oh, wow, that's cool. That looks nice, you know? Again, going over the engagement, make sure you're engaging with your followers and you're replying back to comments as much as you can. I know it's hard sometimes, but reply back as much as you can and make sure you're commenting on fellow artists and fellow content creators' posts as well. Make sure you have a theme to your page. I mean, not everybody has like a solid theme, but having a theme definitely helps. If people are looking for a makeup page, they can go to your page and see, oh, this girl does makeup. I'm going to follow her. Um, this person does fashion. I'm going to follow them. Having a good theme is great and making sure your newsfeed looks attractive and looks presentable and it looks nice, you know? When you go to your feed, you don't want it to be all scrambled and weird and random. I mean, it can be from time to time. Mine's not 100% like perfect, but I try to keep it in rows of three. Sometimes it'll be all the same look, sometimes it'll be random looks, but I try to keep it all in rows of three. That way when you go to my page, it looks a little organized, somewhat organized. A little bit. I want to look like I have my life together a tiny bit, even though I don't, right? That's the goal. Posting in your Instagram story is super important as well. You don't want to post just like a bunch of random stuff all over your Instagram feed. If you want to share pictures of your cat, that's great. Awesome. Do it in your Instagram story. <laughs> Don't post it on your feed. Don't post pictures of the flower you just picked on your feed. Don't post a billion pictures of the same look on your feed. At most, maybe two or three on your feed, but try to keep all the randomness on your story or have a personal profile for that. I don't have a personal profile. Voodoo Barbie doll is my only profile on Instagram and that's that. I just post all my randomness. In my story, I also post like little videos of my looks that I do, pictures that I'm not gonna post on there. I kind of post like sneak peeks in there or just things you're not gonna see on my feed in my story. I also post links to my YouTube. I show when I upload a new video in my story, I just show all kinds of crap in my story and I try to post in my story at least once a day, even if I'm not posting on my feed. It's crazy how much of your story actually gets seen and how much engagement you get from stories as well. <coughs> <clears throat> ah. Something else um, that goes with like making sure your newsfeed looks nice is your bio. Your bio should look really nice and organized and not too much of it in there. You don't want too much crap in your bio. My name on my Instagram is Voodoo Barbie Doll, but my actual name, I just keep it as Sydney Nicole. Um, I don't put any like emojis in it or make it all weird and stuff. I just, has a, I just have it as Sydney Nicole. I do have emoji in the middle of Sydney and Nicole at one point, <laughs> but then people started thinking that my name was Nicole and that I was from Sydney, Australia. Nope, so I just took out the emoji and left it as Sydney Nicole. And below that, I put kind of what I do. So it says glamour, body paint, SFX, and cosplay. Those are my four main points of my page. I post makeup. So that's what I put as the first and foremost things people can see. Oh, hey, she does makeup. The next thing I put is shape shifting makeup artist, Slytherin witch, and glam pyre. So I put all these spooky kind of things that have something to do with like Halloween or spookiness to show that I am a spooky girl, but I still keep it glam, you know what I'm saying? So shape shifting makeup artist, that tells you that I'm a makeup artist and I change the way I look all the time. Slytherin Witch tells you that I'm a Harry Potter fan and Glampire tells you that I'm spooky but I'm glam and pretty at the same time. That's kind of the whole point of my name, Voodoo Barbie Doll. 
too is you know I'm spooky but I'm cute I'm pretty and then I just put my business email below that and then my YouTube link right below that and I am a business account so it has a link to my email but people don't pay attention to that so I put my email in my bio still because people are weird and they don't pay attention to anything so keeping your bio looking nice and organized putting a few key points about yourself in there and then maybe a few good things about your brand or what you're trying to do you know what I mean if you're trying to get PR and trying to get advertising, put your email address in there, your YouTube, so we can go subscribe, subscribe to that if you make YouTube tutorials, you know, things like that, your Twitter, your Snapchat, whatever you want to put in there. Keep your captions fun and cute, and you want to also ask questions in your captions, so I always ask just little things, like if I post something about cosplay, I might ask, what, do you have any cosplay plans? If you're a makeup person, guy, girl, cat, unicorn, whatever the heck you are. Make sure you're tagging brands and the actual photo itself and you're tagging them in the caption and you're putting product details. Put product details. Put what you're using. Put who it's by. Especially if you want to get PR and you want brands to notice you, you need to do that so you can showcase that you're using their stuff. I used to not put my product details in my photos. People would always just ask me, what am I wearing? They still ask me that question. My biggest pet peeve, y'all, I cannot handle it, drives me up a freaking wall, is when I put product details in my caption and people say, what lipstick are you wearing? Where'd you get those earrings? Is there going to be a tutorial for this? When I wrote all those things in the caption, you can't take two seconds to read a caption. That's literally, it drives me so absolutely insane. <sighs> But I still write everything in the caption because that is going to help a ton. Posting videos is something else too if you're a makeup person posting little videos. Videos get a lot of attention guys and I have a few videos on my profile. My profile typically gets 100,000 views or plus on videos. Sometimes they will get 50,000 views and that's not awful. I do have a few that have like a million or two million views on them and those things keep going. I posted a video like two months ago and it still has like it has like 2 million views on it and it keeps getting more and more comments. So posting videos is really important and that's something you should totally, totally consider and think about doing. You can make videos on your phone. Don't think you need a fancy camera to make videos. I have used my phone for years. Oh my god, ever since I started YouTube. I used to use an iPad. It was the worst quality ever. If you go back on my YouTube and look, you'll see that I used an iPad. <laughs> Not cute, didn't look nice, but I did it still because I wanted, I wanted to pursue this. So using your phone is not bad. Phones have great cameras on them. Most phones have better cameras than actual cameras are. So write different types of comments. I already talked about this briefly, but make sure you're not writing the same thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, over and over and over again, or cool, nice, awesome, great. Write more meaningful comments because Instagram, again, is going to see you as a spam bot, a spam account. They will... They will deny you of all the great things of Instagram. They will take your account down. I have seen and heard of it happening. Some extra little key points I just kind of want to talk about is, this is so important, be yourself. I know that sounds cliche and cheesy and that sounds silly, but it's so absolutely true. If you think you're quirky or you think you're weird or you think people won't like you, you're wrong, you're absolutely wrong. Be yourself. People are going to like you for that. People are going to like you for your weirdness or your quirkiness or whatever it is. Don't be afraid to be yourself because you know what? There's a billion people out there who are exactly the same and they're all doing the same things and that's okay. We all love makeup. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not a competitive world. We're not in competition with each other. We should all be friends. It's the makeup world. We're, what are we in competition for? Please let me know because I don't know what it is. We're all just doing the same thing and we're all trying to make it in this world and be something. So don't be the same thing to the next person. Be yourself, be your quirky self. Don't be afraid to be different than other people. And I hear a lot of people, you know, get down in the dumps because they don't think they're unique enough or they don't think they're enough or they don't think they're ever gonna get noticed. First off, don't do this just for fame and money. 
yes, of course, that's something we all want out of this. We all want to be famous or to get money out of this or whatever the case might be. Like that's something that we all want, but that should not be the only reason you're doing this. There should be other reasons why you are trying to make an Instagram and why you're sharing your work. You should just want to share your work because you love doing this and you like sharing it with the world. It shouldn't just be all about the fame and the money. If that's all it's about, it's going to be a hard motivation for you because it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't. I'm on almost year four <laughs> of doing this whole social media thing and I'm just now kind of breaking through and I'm getting posted um, by Huda Beauty. I've gotten posted by Anastasia. I've gotten posted by a few other brands. I'm kind of starting to get PR now from certain brands and from certain things. It doesn't happen overnight, guys, and it's not going to. And if you think it's going to happen overnight, you have another thing coming for you. Some people it does happen overnight for, but that's very rare and that's not going to happen to everyone. Another huge point, do not buy followers. Do not do that. Do not do that because all those followers are going to be fake accounts with no person controlling them. They're not going to like your stuff. They're not going to comment on your stuff. They're going to be ghost followers and you can tell when an account buys followers because they might have 1 million followers but their photos are only getting a thousand likes. So that tells you right there that most of their followers are probably spam bots or spam accounts because you should be getting at least, I don't know, 10 to maybe 20% of your following basis. So if you have 100,000 followers, you should be getting like 5,000 to 10,000 likes on your photos. And that's just the general thing. It's kind of weird. Like you'd be like, um, I should be getting 100,000 likes on my photos, but that's just not how it works. Because again, algorithm and not every single one of your followers, unfortunately, sees your posts. Hopefully your followers love you enough though that they go and check your account to see if any new stuff that you've posted and they will like your stuff so that they can start seeing it a little bit more in their feed. Um, but again, don't buy, don't do it. Don't buy stuff because it's just not going to work in your favor and your engagement's going to be low and it's going to suck and you're going to be sad because nobody's liking your stuff but you have so many followers. Do it organically. Don't beg. Don't go and comment on other makeup artists who work really hard and be like, hey, I'm a fellow makeup artist, guys. Come check out my account. I hate that. Ooh, I hate that so bad. That gets you blocked real quick. That's like begging and like <laughs> seeking it and just work hard. It will come if you keep working hard and you are posting good quality content, you're engaging with your followers and your followers are engaging with you and you're working hard. Work hard. Like, this isn't easy, guys. This is a full-time job. It's not... It just doesn't happen as easily as people think it happens. It just doesn't. It's hard work. It's a lot of work. And so people fail to understand and they're like, that's stupid. Why do you want to be famous on Instagram? That's dumb. That's like super easy. It's not easy. It's a career. So, and it's fun. I love posting my artwork and sharing it with the world and the world gets to see it. So that's really important to me is making sure that everyone sees my artwork and that I get to share it literally with the whole entire world. That's the coolest thing ever. Those are really all the tips that I have. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me down below or ask me on my Instagram. I can try to answer you on my Instagram, but it's a little bit more difficult doing it there. Like I said, I, um, you know, I got to 10,000 followers in August of 2016 and at the end of the year, the end of 2017, I hit 100,000 followers. It was like, it was like between 7,000 and 10,000 followers a month that I got throughout the year. I did gain, like I said, 30,000 followers in four months. So that's pretty dang good if I do say so myself. These are just all the things that I've been doing and things that I've noticed and things that have worked for me and I hope they work for you guys. Like I said, I'm, I don't know what Instagram's doing. I don't know what they're changing. I don't know what they're gonna change in the future. I just don't know what they're doing. These are just the things that work for me. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just as lost as all of you but I am trying to just give some points out and like I said if one or two things helps you out a little bit then my job has been done today I did what I came to do if you guys have any questions comments or concerns please leave them down below and let me know and let me know if this video was helpful at all for you I just decided on a whim to make it and thought it might be a little helpful Thank you guys so much for watching. 
I hope you learned something and I will see you in my next video. Bye.